when it'll start. And so good to welcome you. It's so good to see you again, David. You're looking great, and I'm glad to hear you're getting toward the end of that great massive magnus opus that you're working <laughs> on and so forth. And mm -hmm. welcome in the audience. Welcome very much to Conversations. Great personal honor and privilege to welcome to the program a friend of Conversations, and very much so of the broader world, and that being David Finn. David Finn is the co-founder and the current chairman of Reuter Finn, the very large uh, public relations firm. And I could say off, uh, he, David Finn has always had a very strong commitment to ethics, mm -hmm. and he's also had a very strong commitment to the arts and particularly sculpture. And I think he's probably the leading photographer of sculpture in the world. Uh, and he's just finishing a magnus opus of sculpture from the beginning of the world to the, to the end of the world, or something of that sort that will be out over the next period of time. Right. And with all of that, David, so good to see you. Welcome well, to MNN once always again. Always nice to see you and have a nice conversation. Always you. good. I wonder, maybe you could, David, if you would, because I think you got started, you and um, uh, Mr. Reuter got started uh, right after the Second War, more or less, with your firm. We, yes, we did. We started in 1948. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we had both been in, in the Army mm -hmm. during World War II, and when we, uh, he married my sister, so he was a brother-in-law. Keep it in the family, <laughs> huh? Yeah. And we were good friends and mm -hmm. decided that we wanted to um, uh, do something that we thought would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And um, so we went into the public relations business, which we knew very little about. Mm -hmm. But after World War II, you know, a lot of new companies were starting. Y sure. And uh, we were just one of them. Yeah, and, right. Uh, Got started small, I guess, huh? Oh, very small. We had huh. one client. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, yeah. Our client was Perry Como. Perry Como, the uh, great he, he, crooner, he yes. a great singer. Yes. And he was just beginning to come into the world of, as a major figure. Yes, uh-huh. And um, uh, he hired us for a small amount of money, mm -hmm. and uh, we did a good job for him, and at the end of the year, he became number one. Wow. Well, okay. That that's a, wonderful. That was a long time ago. You uh, said his career and your career is off at the same time. <laughs> right. Started. A good synergy, that. Right. Yes. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then so far, now now it's going to be one of the very largest of the PR firms on the world we have scale, a large or firm. where does it fit in? We, we have about, uh, about 700 people working for us, and mm -hmm. we have offices in China and, and uh, in Europe mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and all around the U.S. And, of course, the business has changed a lot. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. a, a whole world has changed yes. because of the computer and how mm -hmm. we... we commute with each other, communicate with each other. So uh, I'm trying to keep up with all my young friends. Tell me about it. I know <laughs> all about it, yeah. 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 But I, I, I keep you know, I keep working on books. Yes. Uh, I, I bought my... Yeah, let me hold it up, in fact. I'm not sure. Willie, let me know where I can best do this so you can come in. I mean, I'll hold it up and let him see. This is this is your latest. And tell, tell off the top of your head, how many books have you that's published? My, that's my 103rd book. 103rd book, ladies and gentlemen. Where are we coming? Here, Willie, or where? Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. This is the 103rd book published by this gentleman, and he's written on so many different subjects, it's amazing. And what's the title of this one, David? It's, it's called The Facade Reliefs of the Orvieto Cathedral. That's in Italy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And there's an interesting story about that book, which I can tell you about. Okay, I want to hear about that, but let me show you for a minute. This is not just a book. This will be a book that will be jam-packed full of some of the very best photographic uh -huh. uh, examples of the work of this person. Uh -huh. Let me see. Oh, see, it's 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 a book of um, uh, uh, an artwork. This uh -huh. is an artwork, and all of the books that he's done on the sculpture of this nature, uh -huh. and m most all of the uh, photographs were taken by you with your Hasselblad. Right. And also, he writes commentary on how the meaning of the sculpture can be introduced into understanding the human condition. That is in is in always filled with wisdom and uh, and good thought. And uh, I just want to mention that fact. <laughs> it's true. Oh, you've got your thing. Let me show you this. Well, that's my latest uh, thought and images. Remember that? Yes, I get them all. I get them every month. I got them pasted up all over the good wall. For you. But this, I'm going to show you this too. If you can come in, see, I'm a little bit confused. Which one is the? Is it there? You're going to come in, uh, Willie, if you can. This is a series that he said monthly, right? Right. You send out a. Uh, it comes in this. I got a lot of these envelopes at my house because I'm on your list 
thankfully. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're good thoughts and images. And could I just open this one? We've got two. And let's see. For instance, here, you can see there is the David Smith sculpture. Uh, this is a sculpture piece. And his passion, if it's right to say, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it is sculpture. Right. He is just intrigued by the beauty and importance of sculpture. And then there will also be in this, over to the, uh, the left of the screen, there will be a commentary right. that will relate the meaning of that sculpture piece to the broader human condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He sends these out monthly, and these you can frame and put around the wall to very good advantage. And uh, We've been doing it for 50 years. Doing it for 50, getting the hang of how to go about it, right? Yeah, how to communicate. Well, I'll tell you about that particular yes, sir. one. Okay, see, see, you want to hold that? Okay. Th this particular one, uh, the, the, the quotation is from a guy named Harlan Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah Harlan Cleveland name. was a good friend of mine. Really, he was, yeah. He was Assistant Secretary of State, uh, uh, the, uh, I think, in the 60s, 50s mm -hmm. or 60s, mm -hmm. uh, and a very good friend of mine. And he died uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, a couple of years ago. Yes. And he had a speech that he made uh, when the uh, last speech he made, yes. the friends who were invited to see him, uh -huh. and in the speech he said, if I wiggled my little finger, I believe it would affect the farthest star. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's a great quote, huh? That's yeah. a nice uh, comment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's a, yeah it's, it, it speaks worlds of yeah. understanding the universe, for that matter. And in that, he was a wonderful person who had that vision and mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that uh, that in his own mind, his own brain, he yeah. had that 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 uh, sense of being a reach to the far star, as it were. Right, which we're doing now. <laughs> I know we're doing yeah. that. Yeah. And I I, I, I use this um, the image. Let me hold it up and see if we can get image. it. You see, that's a David Smith sculpture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can. Here, have, let me try and hold it, David, yeah, you for see. you. Let me see if we can hold. It. Maybe you can. Can you come in there? Yeah. See, we should get this down, but here we come. Yeah. There's the image. Right. That's a David that, Smith culture. And, and that seemed to me that the, 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 uh, the wire going up was reaching to the farthest stars. All right, right. yeah, right, 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 right. I thought it was an appropriate uh, image to, to accompany that, that, that lovely uh, st statement on his part. And that's a piece of sculpture that is, uh, it's, it's hard to see two-dimensional, but it's, um, what's the dimensions it's, it's of it? Three, it's three-dimensional. It is, three yeah, sure, it would be, yeah. yeah uh -huh. The famous uh, artist, mm -hmm. and um, I thought that was very nice. And then I had another one. Okay, let's show that off. Uh, this one is um, a statement from our president, our current president. Okay, let's come in, David, if you, I mean, uh, jo uh, Willie, if you can. I'll hold this up if you can get in on this. This is uh, Mr. Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial. Oh, the Lincoln Memorial. Uh -huh. and it was a statement that he made, Brahma, at, at one of his speeches. Do you have it memorized, or could you read? No, it's, <laughs> it says here, we have a responsibility to produce the health of our people while saving lives, reducing suffering, and supporting the health and dignity of people everywhere. That's Mr. Obama. That's Mr. Obama. That's not Mr. Lincoln. Mr. Obama, he said it. Uh -huh. And yes. I thought it was nice to see it together with Mr. Lincoln. R right, right. I thought okay. it was Lincoln said wonderful things about the world. And do you count the uh, the sculpture piece of Mr. Lincoln, the Lincoln Memorial, as a major piece of sculpture yeah, on the I, world I've, scale? I, you know, I once did a whole series of uh, articles um, in, a mag in a newspaper called Roll Call in mm -hmm. Washington, published yeah. in Washington, of uh, sculptures in, in the Washington, D.C. area. There's a lot, yeah. And uh -huh. uh, this this was one of them. Of course, I couldn't, couldn't not photograph yeah, right. the uh, right. Abraham Lincoln one. And uh, there he is, you see, with his eyes looking forward and yes. his hand on the right. side. Right. It just seemed to be appropriate. I'm going to send this to Barack Obama. Do by all means. I, I just sent that. You, you send yeah. these out on a monthly basis, right? I send them out on a monthly basis to our friends and our, all our employees. And uh, when I walk around our offices in New York or elsewhere, mm -hmm. I'm always pleased when I see uh, somebody have put the latest one on their 
in front of their uh, in front of their uh, desk. I have them all. <laughs> they come every month. It's a great thing. Oh, another one for David. Yeah, I'm really I happy. And it. there's always good yeah. thought yeah. and everything. And I know you're really you're really intrigued by that. And you uh, uh, and this Magnus. Maybe you could mention the Magnus Opus that you're working on now. And you're just coming to the end of it. You've been working on that for quite a few years. Yeah. And that's a major thing that's going to be coming out over the next uh, year or two. Well, the first one is coming out in the, in the fall. In the fall of this year, 2010. Yeah, this year. And uh -huh. I am very You have the publisher and everything all set up? I'm, I'm very published. Yeah, I'm very pleased. The publisher is uh, a friend of mine. He published another book of mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that he decided to publish the series. Uh -huh. And um, the first one is actually the th volume three. Okay. And his early early Renaissance. I, I don't know why he decided that he should start with volume three, but maybe he thought that was a special one. It's the early, well, it, early Renaissance. Yeah, I, I remember that when I was talking to you earlier on this that you were, the title of the whole series was something series of sculpture from the beginning of time to yeah. something like. But it was yeah. from the you know from way back from right, the beginning right. Stone Age and that sort right, of thing. It big, begins way back and ancient ancient sculpture. Right. And then it goes to uh, Ro Greece and Rome and then medieval and early Renaissance and Renaissance and all the way on to modern times. And mm. I, I, I've excluded any artist who's still living. Oh really? Yeah, I, okay. I, I did that because I, I published a lot of works by uh, uh, sculptors. Who you were, have indeed a series of right, them, yeah. but I decided that some of them were great and some of them weren't so great, mm -hmm. and uh, rather than decide which ones were important, more important than others, mm -hmm. I leave out everybody who's alive today and mm -hmm. just include those in the past. Because all those in the past were great artists. Yeah, right. right. And uh, that, that made it sensible to me. You've always been interested, I I deeply as you are, in sculpture as one part of the artistic expression. Right. Uh -huh. I, 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 you know, I, I probably told you that my, my first time I did this was for a, a, a sculptor in Norway. Uh -huh. I, I had been to Oslo uh -huh. uh, on a vacation with my wife. Yeah. And I uh, happened to come to a, a wonderful place with many sculptures by a guy named Gustav Bigland. Okay. Bigland. He lived in the early 20th century, mm -hmm. and he did hundreds of sculptures, wow. and all in one park, uh -huh. uh, which the city had given to him in order to fill it up with sculptures. Wow. He didn't make any money mm -hmm. on the sculptures that he created, but he got a salary from the from the government of Oslo. So he had, he had access to art supplies and a way right, to live. Right, he had, mm -hmm. a, way, had a nice house and so on. Uh -huh. And uh, he was supported while he contributed mm -hmm. these sculptures, hundreds of sculptures, to this park. And That's, th those are things that are called like the goods of civilization, That's as opposed true. necessarily to the goods and services that right. we think of in the economy. Yeah. But the goods of civilization, in a Renaissance kind of way, uh, are the things that do live down right. through the ages, I <laughs> well, think. That's true. Now, now I, I'll tell you about my, my other book, and uh, related to, to that, uh, mm -hmm. th this book is um, an Orvieto. Yeah. Uh, Orvieto is a small town mm -hmm. in Italy. Okay. And uh, I used to go to Italy with my wife twice a year to w photograph scu uh, sculptures, in Renaissance sculptures, medieval sculptures in Italy. Tuscany a lot? Or? Tuscany. I used to go to, uh, to uh, Florence, Italy. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, amazing. You stayed yeah. there in different hotels. Mm -hmm. I went there many, many, many times. Uh -huh. And one time when I went to Italy, uh, uh, we stopped on the way to Florence to a town called Orvieto, which mm -hmm. is a hill town. Right. Halfway to Florence. Okay. Lovely hill town. Mm -hmm. I drove my car up up the roads mm -hmm. up to the top of the of the uh, little community, mm -hmm. the city, and there was a beautiful church. Mm -hmm. And I went inside the church. Beautiful uh, sculpture paintings and sculptures inside, but on the outside, mm -hmm. uh, on on the surface of the of the uh, of the church, were a series of five. Five like doors mm. that were filled with sculptures. Wow. Okay. And they were they were about 20, 30 feet high. Wow, big. Yeah. Very you, big. Yeah, right. Huh? And I saw how beautiful they were, and it was a story of story of 
the world. Was it like bas relief or? Bas relief. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. And it begins with uh, uh, Adam and Eve, uh -huh. uh, and God creating Eve out what of Adam. What was the material? Huh? What was the material? It was, it was metal. It was, metal, it was, metal, yeah, okay, right, okay. And um, mm -hmm. so well, it, it starts with, uh, with uh, the, the, the beginning of time, uh -huh. and, and, and God creating Adam and Eve. Right. He actually showed Eve coming out of Adam's body. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it went on to the end where uh, you saw uh, uh, hell and mm -hmm. all the people who were commend, committed to go to hell mm -hmm. and live there for the rest of time mm -hmm. and heaven yeah. and the people who went to heaven. There was a series of things, right. a series, series of things. vignettes. Yeah. All the way from the beginning to the end. of. And the, when did he work? Huh? When did he work? He worked in the uh, 14th century. Wow, okay, and has been there all along. I've been there all along. Amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, wonderful sculptures. Did that give you an idea for your series so that you're I, putting so together I now? I said, oh, <laughs> it would be wonderful to yeah. photo photograph those sculptures. And a friend of mine at uh, Itati, you yeah. know, Itati is, sorry, a, no. is a place in Italy that um, scholars go to uh, and uh, they, they are selected to go and study there for a year or so, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, there's professors and s sometimes scholars and students, and I did two books on Itati, which mm. uh, were, is a community like, or it's, is it's, that a location? It's, 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 uh, there is an institution. Uh, there are a, a couple of houses w where people can live, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and they study. There are the, uh, lectures yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and the Living Theater, you know, Judith Molina and uh, Julian, yeah. they had a place outside Genoa like oh, that. They? There was a, an old manor house or something that was, they were able to yeah. use. And it seems to me in Europe there's great support for the arts. Well, that's true. More than we have here, yeah. I would venture. I think I that's do true. You, you think that is true? Yeah, no, okay. but th this was yeah. created by Berenson, and Emmy Berenson, he lived there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he gave it. To uh, to a university, mm -hmm. uh, at Harvard University, um, and so Harvard University now owns it. Owns what the? In, in Orvieto. Okay. And, and, and those doors? And, no, no. And I'm not in Florence. In Florence. In Florence. They, Florence. That's where I used to go to Florence. But uh -huh. Orvieto was near Florence. Okay. 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 So I went to Orvieto and did some books on Orvieto. Yeah. And then, with a scholar who had been at, Orvie uh, at Florence went with me I see. to Orvieto. Uh -huh. and he, had, he, had, he lived in the Orvieto. Okay. And uh, he had been born in Orvieto and he knew those sculptures. And he thought it would be wonderful to do a book on them. So I decided to do a book and I came down from Florence to Orvieto mm -hmm. over a period of several years, okay. going several times, climbing up on ladders and on. Uh, uh, all kinds of ways to get way up and photographing. Uh, with the Hasselblad. With the Hasselblad. Always Hasselblad. Always the Hasselblad. Okay. Uh -huh. Sometimes when the sun was shining mm -hmm. and sometimes when it was pouring rain. Really? Uh, yeah. Deliberately. Pour deliberately setting the two. I, 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 could, I could go there one day. If it was raining, it was raining. I would take. I, I oh, I see. I, by accident yeah. of the actual. I, so, you, didn't, uh, you didn't do it, set it like they no, would for my, a movie scene. It was not my purpose. Yeah, right. Okay. But right. I, I, would, I would photograph those sculptures yeah. even though it was raining uh, uh, very hard and I would, <laughs> I would be soaking wet. <laughs> but I would have my camera and photograph yeah. these. I these hope you had that camera protected. Yeah. 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 So after w several years, I, fin I photographed all these different. Elements, all these sculptures of these, of these, the, the, not the door, but they're on the wall. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, uh, then I wanted to do a book with um, the guy who had helped me, uh, who was a scholar, mm -hmm. and who had lived in Orvieto and had studied at Itati, mm -hmm. and uh, he thought he would write the text for a book. Mm -hmm. So he wrote a text. Right. He wrote it in Italian. Okay. But I wanted to do a book in England, English. Right. So I said, try to get an English translation. Yeah. So he had a friend trying to translate his text, mm. and it was no good. It's a bad you translation. You should have seen Miss Lorch. Huh? You should have seen Miss Lorch, your friend at the Italian right. Academy. She right. could have done right. it for you. I think you played, you played cribbage or something right. with her, I think. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway. The guy tried to translate his uh, text, and it, it just didn't work. Uh -huh. So I went to my, uh, my friend in, in England who wanted to publish this book, mm -hmm. a publisher, and um, 
uh, she said, the woman said, I can't use that text. Uh, I don't know what to say. You have to find some way to either translate it or get somebody else to write it. I love your photographs, but mm -hmm. I have to have a text. Then my friend found another publisher in Italy who liked his Italian text. And he said he would publish it in Italy. And I said, okay. With the Italian text. With Italian text. Right, okay. So he asked So he asked all my photographs to go from my L London publisher to mm -hmm. the Italian publisher. They mm -hmm. set everything down. Mm -hmm. Then the guy looked at all my photographs and he said, I don't like 60 of your fo of your photographs. <laughs> How many of them were there? Oh, 300. 300. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't like 60 of them. Uh -huh. uh, I want you to re reprint those 60. I was, no, nobody had ever asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. I was kind of amazed. Uh, somebody asked me to reprint uh, photographs. Okay, mm -hmm. I reprinted those 60 photographs. Just reprint them like a Xerox copy? I made, copy, a, I like made a, better prints. Made better prints. He didn't like the quality of the reproduction. Yeah, that's what he said. Well, okay. So I worked on each one of them. and, and You did it yourself? I, yeah, I did my, I you did it yourself. I, you have your own dark room. Oh, I did my own printing, yes. Okay. So yeah. I knocked myself out to make it a better print. <laughs> right. Of each right. of those 60 prints. Right. I sent them to him. Uh -huh. Nothing happened. Yeah. I waited and waited and waited. Mm -hmm. And I never heard from him again. Good Lord, what an oddity. So he wasn't, pub wasn't publishing that book. Mm -hmm. So then I, uh, I found another friend, uh, a woman named uh, Anita Moskowitz, who had done a bo another book with me, a very mm -hmm. nice lady. She teaches at a college here in, in uh, Long Island. Mm -hmm. And I asked Anita, would, would you like to write a text uh -huh. for an English uh, book? Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I, I know that very well, and I'd love to write it if you want me to. Yeah. So I went back to my English publisher, uh -huh. sent all the photographs back <laughs> from Italy back to England, to London. Yeah. And this lady, Anita Moskowitz, wrote a, a lovely text, mm -hmm. and this book came out about a month ago. Oh, well, let's look at it again with newfound uh, understanding of all the different... Boy, look at that. That is amazing. So that the cover this, shows... This, uh, yeah, let me... Let, let, where do I put it? I'm going to put it here, so if you can come in tight. It's just gorgeous. See, yeah, that's a, absolutely gorgeous. It's a picture of God, a mm -hmm. young God, creating a woman out of a man sleeping, mm. Adam and Eve. And this is part of that. That's, that's one of the, on, on, this, on the front of that uh, church. Right, isn't that, uh, and let's, let's just open one at random, shall we? Just do it, let's show you do it. Well, there's those, text. All, all, those, all those other. Okay, let's see, let's see, look at, look at the beauty of yeah. that. And beautiful photographs and so forth. And it was done. By, uh, the Every one of your works is a work of art in itself, oh. showing the art. They're beautiful. Well, They're beautiful books. They're not just knockoffs or something. They're beautiful books, perfectly done. And I congratulate you on this. The 104th? Uh, yeah, the 3rd. 103rd. Oh, well, okay. Oh, and, uh, I thought we had 104. You only had 103rd. You had better get busy. Is coming out shortly. Oh, sure, it <laughs> figures that you'd have the 104th but this, coming the, out. The, the artist was a guy named Laurent, Lorenzo Maitani. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, he was in charge of that. Uh -huh. And of course, he had other, other artists working with him. Right. And so, but he's given the credit with uh, having done this. Mm -hmm. So it took me maybe 15 years yeah. for this book to come out. Oh, I photographed them in, in the late 1980s, right. and I went to Italy to try and see if that guy would publish it, yeah. and I tried to find somebody else to write it, and now it's come out in 2010. Congratulations! <laughs> and over the horizon is this magnus opus that you put together, which is sculpture from the beginning right, of time right, to the present. Right. And that's going to be a major contribution to world culture. Yeah. Uh, you've been working on that very hard. I've been working for a long time, and I, I keep working on them. Uh, I, I work at, at, the, at my office. I spend time in my office. I go there uh, every day, and then I work on weekends at home. Mm -hmm. I make prints that uh -huh. I had never made before, but I have the negatives, and I have uh, the, so I, I can make the prints. Yeah. And uh, I write the, the description uh, of, of each of the descriptions. You do that art. at home mostly. You do that at well, home when you're putting together the book. Yeah. It's easier to do at home than you got the distractions of the office. Well, no, it doesn't matter. No, okay. I, I work both at home and, and in the office. And then uh, there's a, a, a friend of mine who uh, works at Ruta Finn and has worked there for 25 years. Uh -huh. And he 
uh, he and I design design the text, design the book. It's beautiful. I and, can uh, see. Yeah. So uh, th th this is not this book, but yeah. the, the new series of eight volumes. Yes. And he and I work together. And uh, we work almost every week. We spend uh, a couple hours on that. Uh, on that with, with a, a, well, you've been on that for years. Now. Years, years. And you, uh, and you, I, you, I didn't know who was going to publish it, whether somebody was going to publish it. And finally, we found a publisher. Publisher worthy, worthy of doing uh, it in the uh, way. What, what, and is it going to be a standard appearance of the a large, series? Large book. Large. Uh, what's uh, the dimensions of yeah, it? Be, yeah, uh, uh, probably a little larger than this book. Uh huh. And uh, uh, lots of photos. Maybe. As many as 600 pages. Uh, wow! On a, on a uh, per volume. Per volume. Oh, it's going to be a major thing. 13 uh, volumes. Uh, no, 10 volumes. 10 volumes. Yeah. That's a major yeah. project. It is a major. Project. It is. You put a great deal. Now you've been interested in sculpture. Yeah. And that's apart from all the work you have in terms of having a very large public relations right, firm. You right, run right, a business. Right, that would be right. five or ten lifetimes could fill up in many people's. Right. But you've been very busy. Right. But you've been in interested in the arts. I know you have a deep abiding interest in ethics. That's and true. particularly, you have a straight ab abundance, uh, uh, eth the ethics of public relations, right. which is an important industry that affects the world. So you have a lot of right. interest in that, in that sort of thing. But uh, the, this, the interest in sculpture, was that from when you were very young that you picked that up? Or it was, uh, you could have been abstract art, or it could have yeah. been something. But you, I, and I, you are the leading photographer of sculpture I, in the world, I, I would I've think. I've done more than anybody else has. Yeah, and recognized as such. Uh, Congratulations uh, on fitting that into a very busy career path. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, uh, when I was young, I was a painter. You were? Yeah. And I thought I would be a painter, I thought I'd be a writer. You were in the arts, yeah. Yeah. When I, when was I, Mr. Ruder also arts-based? Well, he's interested in that. Yeah. Bill Ruder is my age, and now mm -hmm. he's been very ill for quite a Sorry. while. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I, I was always interested in art, and uh, the idea of doing books or taking photographs was something I'd never thought of. I remember uh, when you finally got to where you could publish things under the name Ruder Finn. That was only about 10 <laughs> years ago. Well, a long yeah. time ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when you got to where you could publish books. The, the, the yeah. Ruder Finn books, yeah. yeah. Oh. We still publish Ruder Finn books, a nonprofit. Yeah. Publishing uh, uh, enterprise. Yeah. And we publish books uh, you, by friends of mine who are very uh, important uh, yeah. artists or yeah. writers. Uh, or public figures. Uh, public you knew Kofi figures. Anna. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My friend Kofi Annan, uh, yeah. I did a couple of books on him. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, we have that, but I, I, I don't, occasionally I publish. One of my books mm -hmm. uh, for Rudolfin Press, yeah. but I don't like to do that Why? that much. It seems like I'm just uh, taking advantage of uh, of a nonprofit uh, pu publishing thing and mm -hmm. publishing my own books. I'd rather have a book published by a publisher that has his own distribution and uh -huh. and decides that he or she thinks. Is worth publishing. Yeah, and you're in touch with that world oh, of I, uh, I, disseminating I, art. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I've had at least ten publishers mm -hmm. who publish work, work, books. Of where is the best work being done technically? Is it Japan or where it tends to be? Or, today, today, yeah, yeah, in terms of the uh, you know art books, not not just not uh, art books. Or, or you know what yeah, I mean? Art, art books. They, they've gotten into a lot of trouble. The, the major art book publisher was Harry Abrams. Okay. And Harry Abrams was a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he published my first books, okay. and, and uh, uh, he, he published a book on Vigeland, and he published many, many, many books yeah. of mine. And he died, mm -hmm. and he, the company was sold mm -hmm. to another company, and now it's owned by a, 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 a publisher in, 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 in Europe, mm -hmm. owns Harry Abrams' uh, company. Mm -hmm. And most of the publishing companies that published art books are out of business. Are they really? Why? Yeah. What's happening in they, terms they of They couldn't the, sell them. They couldn't, couldn't sell. Couldn't sell. Yeah. Or they couldn't. They had a art books are a real art in themselves to create art books right. rather than uh, just something that's typescript. Now, now this, yeah. this yeah. The, 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 the publisher that's publishing my my series of books mm -hmm. and published this book, mm -hmm. um, he sells most of his books to uh, to universities. Yeah, and uh, to art schools, and, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they love having those books. Absolutely, they're gorgeous. I got a whole bunch of them, and I, they're yeah. right in a 
place of yeah. honor. Yeah. You know, they're really beautiful books. Yeah. So uh, pu the publishing business has changed a lot. And yeah. Now you have the in internet and uh, a lot of people are, are printing books on the internet, you know. Right, yeah, and we have all those uh, developments, technological yeah. developments. Yeah, no. people say that, that printed books are going to go out of business someday. Yeah. I hope they won't. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I, I, I love having a book. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, I do too, even, yeah, I know, but th there are these things going on. Uh, and so you're very interested in that, you've done all that work. What a, well, you've been really very busy and everything like that, and you always have time to talk to people, and you have about 10 million friends. You seem to know everybody in the world uh, <laughs> at, at a level of real uh, warmth and friendship and so forth. I wonder if maybe we could talk some about uh, the ethics. Because I know one of the things, you have a, you have a magazine, Move. Is it still going? Well, it's still Move. Still goes, yeah. yeah still and there are articles written in there about the human condition and the ethic, yeah. and a lot of, and one of the things you're really interested in ethics of public relations, a big issue, and ethic and public relations is part of a broader communications capability within the society. But I know you have a tremendous commitment to that, and you had a committee, or you formed a group within the company that concerned with the question of ethics and so forth. Well, Could we, you address yourself to we, that, not only for yourself, but for the world in general? First of all, we have a, a, consult, a member of our firm, mm -hmm. his name is Emmanuel Chavidjian. Yes. Yeah. And he is our ethics advisor. Okay. Uh, ethics, uh, ex, uh, he's an executive in charge of ethics. Okay. And we have meetings. Uh, periodically of members of our firm mm -hmm. to talk about a particular ethic is ethics issue that we're facing we're a, facing a particular issue but you all have you laid out some ground rules for the larger issue of how you know, you know, the, the responsibility of the public relations people in terms of informing the public yeah. When they have contact with certain interests that want something put forth, and sort of, it's not advertising. It's different from advertising. Oh, is, yeah. But you understand what I'm trying to get at here for well, the yeah, audience that may be viewing. There are always ethical issues Thank and you. problems. Everybody yeah. has ethical sure, problems. Sure. In our personal lives, we have ethical problems. Right. Should we do this or do that? If yeah. we do this, maybe we're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And there's nobody there telling us not to do the wrong thing. Right. So we we all uh, we all have experiences mm -hmm. of doing things that uh, we, 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 we're not sure that are right and or, or that we think are right right so th that's an aspect of our of our human lives mm -hmm. and it's true of business any yeah. kind of business yeah. faces that so they're now uh, over the last uh, maybe 20 years or so mm -hmm. Ethics offices have come into business. Uh, in business in general. Into yeah. different co corporations. You were pioneering that. We were pioneering. You were from the beginning. We you were, were concerned with that. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, we started you know, yeah. a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. We had a, a particular ethical problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we didn't know what to do. Uh, I probably told you that story. Well, you had one with the thing in Greece, I think. We had the one in Greece, right? Because is that the one you're referring to, or was no, there another? No, referring, referring well, to tell it, me no. about the other. I don't remember that. You had a problem with the junta in Greece. Uh, well, then. yeah, but um, you remember there was a senator, McCarthy. Oh. Yes. Who was attacking anybody who was a very liberal person. You're talking uh, early 50s. Or yeah. So, yeah. You were just getting going. Right. And building up your account list. Right. So, yeah. And Sen Senator McCarthy was going after uh, all kinds of c companies and individuals yes. who he thought were liberals, and he, he accused them of being communists. Yeah, right. The and Red Scare. he was so effective mm -hmm. that um, if, if somebody agreed Mm -hmm. that they had been a communist, they mm -hmm. could be fired. Yeah, right. And right. McCarthy was so effective. Ruined many careers. Ruined yeah. many careers. Zero Mostel, I remember, yeah. as an actor. Yeah, go ahead. And, and then so he would, he would persuade a, uh, a CEO that if he didn't fire this guy who mm -hmm. had admitted to be, a, at one time admitted to be a communist, or was still a communist, he would attack that company. Yeah, the company, and, yeah. And mm -hmm. accuse the company of, su of supporting communists. Mm -hmm. And um, so w one time, uh, a guy had been fired, a PR person had been mm -hmm. fired uh, because he, he refused to answer the question. You could, you could do that, you know. Mm -hmm. When McCarthy asked you, I want to ask you a question. Have you been or ever been uh, or yeah, something? Yeah, and I, I would say, 
uh, I, I have the, 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 the Fifth Amendment right. uh, you can permits me not to answer any questions. Right. Mm -hmm. So whatever you ask me, I'm not going to answer. Yeah, right. And I, I won't tell you whether I was a communist right. or not communist or I'm... Harry uh, Bridges uh, took it that, I think. They were yeah. after Harry Bridges and... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm musing. Well, anyway, uh, so a guy was fired uh, uh, because he, he pleaded the Fifth Amendment. Uh -huh. And McCarthy went after him and oh. called him a Fifth Amendment a communist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he's a Fifth Amendment communist, fire him. Uh -huh. He got fired. He came to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, the guy came to you. Yeah, he came to us. And that us. would have been about 52 or 53 yeah. or something? Yeah, he was looking for a job. Oh, he came to you looking for a job. Yeah. He had been fired. Yeah, been fired. From another PR he was, firm. He was, okay. from, he was from Denver. He okay. came to New York uh -huh. looking for a job. Mm -hmm. Came to work. Uh, ask, we were hiring people left and right. Yeah. He you was, were growing. Okay, yeah. He was uh -huh. a nice guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. He knew a lot about public relations. Right. I liked him. We yeah. hired him. Right. Then another guy. You we, were aware of this thing that had yeah, happened? Yeah, had you been fired about, for the comedy yeah, thing? Yeah, I didn't care about that. I yeah, no. Not, Being an ethical person, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, right. So then a month or two, so another guy came who was fired someplace uh -huh. and uh, somehow came to our company and asked for a job. We were hiring people left and right. We yeah. hired him. Uh -huh. And then uh, word got around that mm -hmm. if people got fired because mm -hmm. they pleaded... They could all go member, to Ruder Finn. <laughs> go to Finn. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they start trying to tire you with that feather or tire and feather you with that happily. You know? So a third guy came yeah. to us. Uh -huh. Said I, I'd like to have a job. Mm -hmm. I was just fired because mm -hmm. I pleaded the Fifth Amendment. So, what I, the hell's I, going on here? I, yeah, I said to myself, mm -hmm. if we hire this guy mm -hmm. or a fourth guy or a fifth guy mm -hmm. or a sixth guy mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, mm -hmm. McCarthy's going to find out about us and go after us, and then we'd be in a lot of trouble. And this is before. Murrow came out, or yes. before the opposition finally started right, coming out right, for right, the nonsense of this right. quasi-fascist baloney. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what did you say so to I, yourself? I, I, so I didn't know what to but do. But he's really good, and he's got a great set of ideas so, and so credentials, I, I, and I, it's not just. And so how did you handle that ethical problem? So should I decide not to hire a, an able guy? Because somebody, because he would plead the Fifth Amendment, which is right. Did you take this up with your wife? Huh? <laughs> no. Did you take this up with your wife and your dog? No, I, you know, I, uh, it, uh, I didn't know what to do. I talked uh, to Bill Reuter, and yeah. he didn't know what to do either. Yeah, you're so young. I, then, too, I, yeah. I, I, I uh, uh, decided to ask some advice, and I found out that there was a professor of philosophy at Columbia University who was interested in ethics. Okay. So I called him up. Had you been interested in ethics out yes, of your life experience and in your family background and everything? Yes, I had yeah. been interested in ethics. Okay. I had an okay, uncle okay. who was a rabbi right. and so right. on. Okay, good. I'm yeah. very concerned right. about right. ethics. Okay. Uh, and um, anyway, um, Guy at Columbia. I, I, this professor. Right. I called him up and said, I have a problem. Mm. Could we come up and ask your advice? So, mm -hmm. sure. He said, okay. So, mm -hmm. Bill Ruder and I. And, and, and the third guy, who was our executive vice president, the guy named Paul Zucker, mm -hmm. uh, three of us went to see this professor. Right. And he said, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to help you think about what the options are. Well, that's how, good. How to decide what the ethical thing to do. Huge be. issue. Huge huh? issue. Yeah. Sign him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we, we had a lot of discussion. Right. With, we said if we hired him, we had, we had, we had get trouble. If we don't hire him, it's to make a mistake. This issue still lives with us, doesn't I, it? I know. In I the know. society in general, yeah. Go ahead. Now, after yeah. about mm -hmm. an, a long time of conversation, yes. Somehow or other, we got the idea. Mm -hmm. If we got this third guy uh -huh. a job at another PR firm, okay, we would be honest. We would uh -huh. help him get his job, but we uh -huh. wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't uh, create a d danger for our own company. Okay. So okay. we called a friend of ours, uh -huh. and a competitor. So you get the word out. I got call a competitor. So that's, said, that's this guy's a good guy, looking for a job. And he's uh, had we, this problem uh, with we don't, we, don't, we, we don't have an opportunity for him now, but I'd like to, you know, talk, uh, yeah. interview him. Yeah. They, they, they hired, hired him. him. They did. 
Now, thing. what's the implications of that, I'm wondering? I mean, that's like getting the word out and getting a group activity so, and after that, raise the we, dander of a lot of people other than... We became the company <coughs> that anybody in our business, the PR business, who pleaded the Fifth Amendment mm -hmm. would come to us and ask us to see if we could get him a job someplace. Wonderful! Else. What a great thing! So we got a lot I, of guys' jobs. Yeah. And we didn't get ourselves into trouble. Now that's how we learned okay. that an ethics advisor is an important person uh -huh. in, in a company where you always face some kind of ethical problems. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we, we had different people giving us, uh, who were specialized in ethics, uh, uh, Protestants and Catholics and Jews uh -huh. who were uh, 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 ministers or priests yeah. or whatever. Right. And um, then we, uh, as time went Secular on... Secular philosophers? Yeah, philosophers. Yeah, right, oh, anywhere. Right. Where it comes in, yeah, right, I understand, yeah. And Humanists, yeah. All yeah. kinds of people. Yeah, right. And we always had problems. Right. And we always asked advice. Mm -hmm. And so that's... Uh, and then we finally hired a, 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 a guy who was very interested in ethics, mm -hmm. and he became our executive in charge of ethics. Yeah, it's the fellow you mentioned. Uh, it's Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, been there. I met him and done program with yeah, him. Yeah, I think I needed a yeah, program. Yeah, a nice whatever. guy yeah. and everything like that. So that's a big issue, not only for uh, Ruder Finn, not only for public relations, but for the society as a whole. Because everyone, no matter what uh, yeah. context you're in, has these questions that are there. And to what do we repair to get a set? Uh, can we get to universal ethics? We have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yes, so we uh, get to certain philosophical understandings uh, of the human condition and all that sort of thing. And to where can we repair to get the standards that can hold up cross-culturally, cross, -culturally, cross uh, s sacred uh, traditions and so forth? And uh, where does it leave us now? And this year is 2010 now. You know, there were ten commandments. Yes, there were. <laughs> and the theory was if you uh, followed all those ten commandments, you'd be a good person. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you found that, well, uh, you were uh, uh, doing something that was perhaps not following exactly what the commandment said, but... Sort of making a creative interpretation. Uh, right. <laughs> yes. Fudging. So you know? then, then mm -hmm. it, it just mm -hmm. became clear to us and to so many other people mm -hmm that everybody mm -hmm. has ethical issues. Mm -hmm. And it's important to address those mm -hmm. and try to find what you think is the best solution. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to always find the best not, solution. No, no, no. And, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, th those are issues that uh, I think w uh, mankind is learning how to address those. I'm not so sure that uh, we're not going to uh, be, be rid of uh, uh, ethical problems in the future. Uh -huh. I think we still have wars that we may or may not be the right ones doing uh -huh. what we're doing. And, uh -huh. and uh, 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 our, our political situation may, may be, I'm sure our president has ethical issues all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, sure, absolutely. And yeah. senators do, and everybody yeah. does. Yeah. So I think it'll never go away. I'm going to go to the New York Ethical Cultural Center tonight. Oh, good to hear Jonathan uh, Shell. Yeah. And uh, talk about uh, atomic weapons and the implications of that. And I remember well his book, The Fate of the Earth. Right. Do you remember that book? When in 1982? I, I do remember that. And it I, was just incredible indictment yeah. or, uh, uh, you know, a, a discussion of the ungodly destructiveness finally we've reached after 200,000 years of being here of our weapon systems that yeah. might be actually species lethal. I don't, I don't know if he'll remember him, but you can ask him. Yes, sir. When I read his book. It just knocked me out. I, was just, uh, I, I called him up. You did, okay. And I, I said that I was so... That would have been about 82 or so. Yeah. yeah. I was so impressed with what he wrote. Yeah. Uh, it was poetry. I mean, it was just really. It was I'm a, sorry. A go ahead. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant book. Yeah. And I don't know what he's written since then, but um, I actually d did know his father too, who was uh, had written a book about China. Okay. Uh, but I, Jonathan had been a, a wonderful writer and it made a big impression on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, his book, I thought, was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him in years, but mm -hmm. uh, I always remember his wonderful uh, analysis I know. of the issues that... We'll because find. it looked it right in the face of the fact that we finally get after knocking each other on the head, tribe against tribe and all yeah. that, 
that the weapons are were he, he faced it. He said it's the it could very well be the whole end right. of our species. Right. So that's an existential new reality that brings a new wrinkle into the ethics or morality yeah. of the human condition. You know, uh, the it's an Times. incredibly exciting time to live. Yeah. And the Chinese the way, uh, warned against living in interesting times because it would be so disruptive <laughs> of uh, peace of mind. You yeah, know? That's true. And this time is in now. Well, you know, the, the New York Times recently had an image of uh, the um, weapons that, uh, the, so that Russia has and we have. Yeah. Huh? Enormous number. They of, just signed another treaty yesterday. They just signed yeah. a treaty. Yeah. And, uh, but mm. each one of these countries have enormous number of these yeah. uh, objects uh -huh. which could destroy the, the entire world. Well, we're not sure of just how destructive they have been. And you were in the Second War. Right. And it was terrible, and we had great numbers, millions, hundreds of millions killed, but we did not have anything on the order that, as Jonathan Shell wrote in Fate of the right, Earth, right. that could mean perhaps, particularly w uh, germ things, that could mean the end of our species. Right. If any, is, if you, do you understand? If a, yeah. Yes, if yeah. any of those, those weapons were used mm. against an enemy, and backed uh, the other enemy right And then back. set off like yeah. Guns of August, Barbara Tuckman, right. or Sarajevo, uh, Crown or Duke. It sets off a thing that right. happens because it, it would only be in the area of something that's totally irrational, right. so that it would be able to set them off, but that I, were there, uh, it raises ethical questions of the highest order. I'm glad that our, our uh, president and uh, his <laughs> His uh, equal person at, uh, at Russia, Menendev, or something. Uh, yeah. agreed to yeah. reduce the number. Yeah, still enormous number. Yeah, and but then there are other weapon systems that we may not even know about. Yes, yeah, true. I mean, there are certain things in the wave weapon kind of thing like that. Well, you remember, and, you remember, Kofi Annan was a good friend of mine. Yes, I know that. And, yes, and uh, I remember he told me uh, one time when he, he uh, before he became. Oh, That's no. your cell phone. Just, just turn it off if you can. No, no, no. So it's a cell phone. Welcome to the modern age, David <laughs> Finn. You got your can cell I phone. Can this for a minute? Well, if you want to, go ahead. Just, we'll just Hello. keep rolling. I'll just wrap on. He's talking Hello? on the telephone. We're talking with David Finn, Hello. but he got a call that apparently got knocked off. I, I maybe may, it was a telemarketer. Maybe my wife. It might have been your wife. Well, if it is, then take Because it. She, she went to the doctor. I know. Uh, she's having a, a and, examination. And uh, she may... Check and see. Be, be yourself comfortable. I can just wrap on and talk about the con human condition. And Let me see if she's... Deep. Yeah, okay. He's checking it out, and we'll just keep rolling tape. And this is one of the interventions into life that happens and that sort of thing. And she is going to have a... Um, and it's very good that the uh, ethical, maybe f the maybe ethical with her, uh, uh, connection between husband and wife that goes back a few decades is part of an uh, ethical context that is being witnessed uh, here at this moment. Alan? Mm-hmm. Hello? Mm hmm Hello? Did I call my wife? Mm -hmm. Did you call the wrong number? Are you having trouble? Are you having trouble working an electronic gadget by any yeah, chance? Oh, yeah, it seems to me that's all I do anymore, David. Is try to work out and work out and make some electronic gadgets like Dick Tracy, and uh, it just goes on and on. And um, but it'd be good for you to peace of mind there. But anyway, they're going to be at the, this is the eighth of um, of April, the year two thousand and ten. And they're going to have a, a, a gathering at the Ethical Culture Society this evening. It'll be too late for you to see this because it will have aired. It will have taken place before this airs. But as um, he is going, they're going to be talking about that and other people concerned with that issue of uh, weapon systems. Well, anyway, she didn't answer. Him. So I'm sorry to interrupt that. No, that's quite all right. That's just a little thing. It it, it comes. We remember remember Dick. Tr you're too young. To, you no, you're not too young. I mean, Lord, you got years on me even. And but Dick Tracy, they had the wristwatch, and now it's all come true. Everything's that's coming true. so quickly. Yeah. It's coming exponentially now. That's true. David, are you optimistic for the human prospect, or do you sometimes get a little worrying that some nonsense like uh, unleashing the hatred and so forth? Because it, if I may, let me just, did you know Isaac Asimov very well at all? I, Isaac I, Asimov? I, I, I know his books, yeah. Amazing man. Right. A, a polymath. Right. And, and you know I like Fuller very much. Right. And, right. But Isaac Asimov, we did a program. It was interesting to me. We just had this economic meltdown of our economy and, you know, and 
Mr. Guy, Mr. Uh, um, who was it? Uh, Paulson came into the Congress, said three days, a three-page thing has to be passed by our Congress, signed by the president, or the whole world's going to fall apart, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And uh, so you had you have that kind of a, a thing roiling the the world now. And um, uh, I, I just wonder uh, if we if, if there isn't maybe some sort of a change, or if we have the existential reality of this destructiveness that we have worked. It's all an extension of our consciousness, but you also have the ability to provide for people. A greater number of people are being lifted out of poverty, and we have the ability to provide for people in a way that may be existentially significant on the positive side, or living re, as Fuller called it. But Mr. I, I Asimov said, well, this is the most, this is the crucial generation. I think he was talking between 1975 and 2050 or something like that. This is the crucial generation that we are either going to join entropy, destroy it, or we're going to make a qualitative, liberating, qualitative transformation like we did when first humanity evolved out of the evolutionary process. That this is the, this is the defining one, and then if you start thinking a thousand years out, that if we don't make it, if we don't find out, it, overcome the, ancient, the inappropriateness of some of our inherited institutions and relate to the future in a way that could be liberating in a certain kind of way, but I don't know, how do you ever think about those lines? Do we live in a time that's qualitatively different, and both negatively and positively, uh, after 10,000 generations, if the biologists are right in terms of our having had 10,000 generations, perhaps, in the history since we first evolved? You know, when I, um, when I hear a philosopher mm. uh, talk about issues like that, uh, mm. um, I'm so impressed that they have a point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, when I read books uh, uh, by philosophers, which I have uh, tried to do over the years, and I see they have their views about what the future will be like, um, everybody has different points of view. Yeah, about right. It. Right. And um, of course, I I have I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I um, uh, I remember. Uh, uh, I think I've told you about uh, an uncle of mine who w was a philosopher, uh, and um, uh, he wrote a, a series of books when he was in the late 80s and nine, early 90s. Uh -huh. And then he told me um, when he was about 95 years old that he had an idea for another book that he was going to write. I said, what, what, do you, what do you have in mind? Yeah. And he said, well, you know, a million years ago, yeah. life came into the universe. Well, well we, we know it's a little yeah, different that, than that, but yeah, things, that, the, be, it's be, a detail, be, right. Being things. Yeah, right. Yeah. Suddenly, mm -hmm. over a period of time, yeah. came into being. Organic process. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, thinking, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about what's going to be like a million years from now. Okay, okay. If I think about what happened a million years ago, mm -hmm. what's going to happen a million years from now? Mm -hmm. So I said, what, what are you, what's on your mind? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, do you think will, what do you think is going to happen a million right. years from and now? And what did the man say? He mm -hmm. said, a million years from now, man will know God. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. I was stunned by that. Okay. that I was so stunned mm -hmm. that he thought that nobody today could have any idea of what God is. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. But that uh -huh. it, is it, it, is, it is possible to think that at some time, a long time from now, mm -hmm. a human being will find out what God really is. Or we'll have another. Okay. Yeah. Now Knowing see, what God is would be like understanding things at a level transcendent to what we wow. have been able to know as we gestated through the human experience and came into a new relationship wow. to the cosmos. Wow. And that may be, we're going to be coming to a point where something along the lines of the end of the birth canal or we're coming, when you get to the point where yeah. you can destroy the species, also 
you could take that measurement of the capability to say we may have transcended scarcity, is mm -hmm. we could apply for a liberation. There have been visions of liberation, uh, end time kind of things and everything. Those times may actually be upon us. <laughs> At a design level, at a level of capability, not yeah. the reality. You've yeah. got a lot of inherited institutions, but that, that a time of qualitative, the way toward achieving that yeah. level of understanding and relating to the cosmos at a level yeah. transcendent to what we've been throughout well, all our evolution. But what, what interests me, though, is that I realize that we are learning more and more about... Exponentially, the, David. Exponentially. Every day, it's a, like a discovery right. comes in over the transit. And, and the, 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 new, the new insights and knowledge uh, is so extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But, and I say but, if you read Aristotle mm -hmm. or Plato, mm -hmm. who lived mm -hmm. uh, 2,500 2, years. years ago... Yes, sir. <laughs> they Same had, issues. <laughs> they, uh, they had insights yes, uh, that are so profound, yeah, right. and that we today can can appreciate uh -huh. their insights and judgment and yeah. knowledge right. that are as great as ever was in the history of mankind. Right, right. So what are we thinking that's, that we're learning new things all the time that are changing the world? Uh, when those guys 2,500 years ago, uh, uh, knew as much about existence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. we do today with yeah. all the knowledge that we have. Yeah. So that's an interesting point of view. Well, that's another thing that unfortunately, one of the problems we have in cable television, even in cable television, without advertising, uh, we have only a limited time. We could talk for 17 hours. We could pick up right on that point next time, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh -huh. Sorry to say we've run out of time. Well, it's time to say goodbye uh, to the audience. Always great to talk to you. Always good to talk to you. We got to get together like the, more often like uh, this should, instead right. of saying we should. We have to have some coffee and stuff. <laughs> okay. And so that's it. That's true. Uh, doing that, all these questions are still there, but it sure is an interesting time. And I really thank you. And the, the ethics of the in public relations is so important. You got a major firm with great ethical qualities to it, and your contributions are monumental to the understanding the culture development of human society, and I congratulate you on all that, mm -hmm. and well, and I wish all the very best for your lovely wife uh -huh. with her, uh, her, operation. her operation that's coming. Yeah. And in the audience, we thank you for viewing. It's been your great good pleasure to have the very wise perceptions of uh, David Finn, chairman of uh, David uh, uh, Ruder Finn, and uh, thank you for viewing. I we would invite you to Tune in. We'll be coming back again, uh, well, tomorrow here on uh, Public Access, and this will be streamed to the whole world. They'll be able to see this on, uh, there's a rumor that uh, they do it in what they call flash. It looks like television. Oh, really? There's a rumor that there are gatherings of penguins in Antarctica that gather on an <laughs> ice floe to watch the program. Oh, is it? Okay. But that's an advance that's happening in terms of the public access realm. Mm. And thank you very much for such a really very, very well-led life and career path. And well, thanks for bringing up that subject when we had no time to discuss it, which means we're going to have to have more programs in the future uh -huh. uh, to discuss the interest, the, 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 the insight that you brought up, ethical, ethically laden as it was. And thanks a lot, David. Okay. Always good to see you. Good to see you. So they're just going to put up the graphics and so forth. So it's so good to see you. We've got to get together, okay? okay yeah. And have some coffee and that kind of thing and okay. pursue these things. And I see you got uh, Joe Friendly coming on now, just into the set. And mm -hmm. so, anyway, things look pretty good for public access. There's a lot going on. Good. I can I'm share that with that. you. It's a way of communicating. I'm, see, I'm glad to see you're still here. Yeah, we're still here, and it, it looks like maybe we're going to be okay. And then also, it's possible to where you can start using all the technology to communicate in a new kind of way. Yeah. And so that's all to the good. Right. Now, David. I